A new anime season is kicking off and this is quite possibly the best season we'll have this year, one that was met by constant delays and postponements. I don't usually watch anime, but whenever there's something that piques my interest, I make sure to check it out and watch it. Last season it was Fruits Basket. I am quite excited for this anime season. This fall, autumn season, has Moriarty the Patriot, Idolish 7 Second Beat and Hypnosis Mike Rhyme Anima. Three anime that piqued my interest. But all these anime were, in one way or another, previously delayed because of Covid-19. And thus, in the first quarter of 2020, recording for anime was halted. Recordings then started to resume in May and June. Now that we're in October, it seems that things have calmed down a bit and the anime and seiyuu industries sure have taken necessary steps to adapt to the changes that were needed to make it possible to continue to have auditions and at the same time recording sessions for anime. Limiting the number of voice actors in the same room is one of the biggest issues, as it takes now twice the amount of time it took with the room with the whole cast available to pull off a recording of an episode. Auditions quite possibly continue to be face to face, especially when at home you can't ensure that your sound is studio quality or that your camera has enough quality between many other details that may be taken into consideration by the anime directors and producers. But how did auditions work to begin with? In this episode, I will be briefly exploring this theme, going over what types of work have auditions and what doesn't, as well as how auditions work and why casts tend to change between drama CDs and anime adaptations. Let's kick off this episode of Seiyuu Lounge. Welcome to Seiyuu Lounge, I am your host Vanessa and in this episode I will be talking about auditions. Seiyuu attend a bunch of these throughout their career, especially if they voice characters in anime. So what are auditions and what's their importance? An audition is, in its essence, a sample performance. It involves the voice actor displaying their skills by performing a special script made just for the audition. This is in case of anime, for a character or set of characters they are aiming to get or sing a song chosen by themselves or a song out of a pool of songs chosen by the producers of 2D music projects. This is, of course, in case they are trying to get a role in a music project. Sometimes, in case of those 2D music projects that have drama CDs, games or anime tie-ins, a double audition is made. In this case, both the acting and singing skills will be tested in order to choose who will be the seiyuu taking each role. Auditions are important to allow the producers and directors to assess a voice actor's skills and take note of the tones of voice available and see if those match their initial ideas of how the characters should sound like. This is pretty interesting as most seiyuu already noted that sometimes they go to audition for a main role and end up getting a different role from what they auditioned for. Much because the producers felt that their voice was a better fit for another character. This might be rigged from the start. There is a lot of talk of pillow business in the CU industry, although we all know that this is not exclusive of this industry and there are some seiyuu that are instant favorites of the directors and producers that still hold auditions just to keep the appearance that everyone is being taken seriously when in fact they already have their choice made from the start. This is the darkest part of the seiyuu industry. The manipulation politics favors the sell yourself mentality that is shoved onto seiyuu by their talent agencies. 
I will talk a bit about it in a couple of minutes. Which types of media don't require CU to audition for? Narration, pachinko, dubbing are three types of media that don't require auditions. Usually CU are handpicked by the producers. In case of dubbing, if a CU is the official voice of a foreign actor, they are always called to dub if that actor is in any movie or series to be dubbed in Japanese. For example, Toshiyuki Morikawa is the official voice of Tom Cruise in Japan. That's a consistent stream of revenue for Morikawa. Drama CDs as well don't require auditions. In this case, the mangaka or sensei directly choose the seiyu they want to voice the characters they created. Auditions are not common for this medium of entertainment. Drama CDs don't pay that well, but as one-offs, they can be an extra source of money for CU. Plus, since there is no casting, there is no bias by the directors, only the word of the mangaka is king. Which leads to pretty interesting drama CDs, casts that you'd basically never find in anime. Which leads me to, why isn't my favorite CU that was casted in a drama CD part of the anime adaptation? This one is tricky, isn't it? It happened recently when the original cast of Given was replaced for the anime series. Given is easily the best BL manga out there. Prior to the anime announcement, the manga was already a big hit in Japan and beloved overseas. The drama CDs have been insanely popular since the start, and the star-studded main cast, which consists of Soma Saito as Mafuyu, Makoto Furukawa as Wenoyama, Hino Satoshi as Kaji, and Yasuaki Takumi as Haruki, is beloved among the fans of Given. Why? Would they replace a star-studded cast for its anime adaptation? I have four reasons as to why there was a recast. These are just guesses based on what is common practice in the anime industry. There might be more reasons or a completely different reason at the core as to why you'd replace the cast from a drama CD when you make an anime adaptation. First off, director's choice. Drama CDs don't have auditions, so you are handpicked by the sensei. When it comes to anime, a director will take over. The director might not like the original cast or some CU in that cast from the drama CD and decides to recast everyone as to not give away the name of who he doesn't really want in the cast. This is the kind of director that plays favorites and if their favorites are not there, there's also another reason why there would be a recast. Budget. Drama CD's casts can, at times, be pretty luxurious and filled with stars. However, when you go to anime and you have to take into account that say you not only get a fee per episode but also a fee per rebroadcast, DVD and Blu-ray releases, you start budgeting your production and end up recasting to try to get some rookies or lower ranked CU into the cast to lower the costs. The sound engineer is not a fan of one or some of the voice actors. It is said in the industry that CU must, by all means, befriend sound engineers, as they also have a say in the final cast. If you are on the wrong page with the sound engineer and they are in that adaptation to anime, it is safe to say that you won't be a part of the cast, thus, in order to not give away that there is bias by the sound engineer and ultimately by the director, the whole main cast is recasted. Recasting to make things interesting. Sometimes there is an audition for the anime version and the casting directors invite the original cast to fight for their roles against rookies and other CU that have signed up for the audition. Sometimes the original cast loses their spots to different CU, giving way for a whole different cast. Once again, this is based on what is common practice in the anime industry in Japan. These are not exhaustive reasons. 
Now let's go to themes that I really didn't imagine myself touching upon. If you thought that auditions were tough, now imagine what is behind. Bullying. There are known counts of bullying in the industry. So after you nail a tough audition, you think, now let's hang out with the cast and have an harmonious environment. Yeah, sometimes see you in the same cast don't particularly like each other's presence. So the environment is cutthroat at times. And in the past, it has escalated to targeted bullying of some CU. There is a well-known case that I won't be diving into, because the last thing I want is people lashing out on the podcast because of something that happened and is documented, but because they are fans of the said CU, they refuse to accept that those CU in question are rotten to the core, despite being good voice actors. So let's move on to another awful, dirty secret in the industry. The pillow business and playing favorites. This is a really sensitive topic, especially because most of the names usually mentioned to be in some way taken preference by directors and producers are pretty big or beloved. At the same time, people tie this CU to the pillow business issue due to them being always in the same anime productions as some well-known sound directors and producers that are well known for playing favorites. Those sound producers or directors use their power over who is casted to get favors out of both male and female CU. Of course, favors of different types. But let's not dive into that territory. Not only it is R-rated and extremely explicit at times, but there are a lot of facts mixed with speculation online that I don't want to explore. I also don't want to dive into detail because it might be a trigger for some listeners, so I will only do the contours of the issue. Have in mind, when a CU is almost everywhere in anime during a specific season, it is almost certain that they got there because of being the favorites to someone in the production team of said anime. However, if your favorite CU does have an erratic career in anime, for example, not getting many leading roles, not having roles in anime in a given season, not being part of the cast in mainstream shonen anime, it is safe to say that your favorite CU is not part of anyone's favorites list and they have been doing their job in the honest way. Some will say, even if my favorite CU is being favorite, that is good, right? They are getting work, that's what matters. Sorry, but no. Their favorite CU might be awesome and have an excellent track record of being really good conveying emotions and giving life to believable characters, but by being favored by directors, especially if it is a recurrent thing, they are taking away the chance for other CU to prove themselves and who knows, maybe impressing with their skills. And some will also say, who cares? The industry improves by giving spotlight to everyone that has an insane level of talent. If it is all the same voice actors everywhere, I guarantee you that people will start thinking something is off, that those CU are being favored and some will eventually even avoid watching those anime series because said CU is everywhere and is no longer fitting the roles they are getting. Imagine that from 2000 to 2010, all the same 90s old school CU were still hogging all main roles in anime. 
Dan, See You Like Yukikaji, Daisuke Ono, Jun Fukuyama, Takahiro Sakurai, Mamoru Miyano and Tomokazu Sugita wouldn't have had their chances to be leading actors and showcasing their talents. Or imagine how would that be if the same CU were everywhere and CU like Daiki Yamashita, Nobuhiko Okamoto, Kaito Ishikawa, Soma Saito, Takuya Eguchi and more couldn't have their chance because those CU from the noughties continue to hog to the leading roles. Does it sound good for the CU industry? Of course not. The CU industry needs variety, not the same old faces and voices everywhere. And some will insist, let others stop watching anime. I will watch Annie's fans too, who cares? That's right, you will, his fans will, but all the other people might not. But you're most likely not living in Japan, so you watching or not matters little to the numbers that make or break anime series in Japan. You can, however, influence DVD and Blu-ray sales from those anime series. That's it if you purchase those. But remember, see you are paid by episode, rebroadcasts and releases on DVD and Blu-ray. I can assure you that if an anime is a flop in Japanese TV, it won't be getting a DVD or Blu-ray release. There goes a paycheck for your favorite male CU down the drain. If it was a flop, it won't be rebroadcasted as well. Another paycheck down the drain. That's already two paychecks less in their bank accounts. As you can tell, we need to look at the bigger picture. Say you need as many people to watch the anime they are voicing characters in, turn into a somewhat popular series, have it released on DVD and Blu-ray, sell well, and somewhere down the line have it rebroadcast. They want that money. That is why they work so hard to stand out. Of course, showcasing their skills is also a focus, but in the end, it is money that keeps them afloat in the industry. Favoritism gives Seiyu a bad name. At the same time, just like we notice favoritism by some producers and directors, all other Seiyu in the industry are also aware. They know it, they gossip about it, those Seiyu that are favorites of a certain director or producer have a target on their backs. If your favorite CU is being favored, it is safe to say that few fellow CU in the industry respect them. There will be, of course, others that will try to latch onto them, seeking an easy way for those connections to somehow transfer to them. Not that the opinion of other CU really matters when all they want is to work and, by the end of the day, everyone is fighting to survive, but, you know, it sits wrong with everyone that works their ass off only to participate in a rigged audition. That is why I actually like that some anime directors hold blind auditions. What are blind auditions? These are the type of auditions in which all roles are up for grabs for anyone that fits the role. There is no indication that henchman number one should sound manly or that the main character should have this or that voice. There's only a minimal number of instructions and it is up to the CU to actually craft the character on the spot. Also, the directors and producers do not have access to the list of CU that will be taking the audition and won't see nor interact with them, only listening to them performing the characters they are aiming for. Shinichiro Watanabe of Zankyo no Terror, Cowboy Bebop and Sakamichi no Apollon fame is known for holding blind auditions. That's how we came up with the cast of Zankyo no Terror that in 2014 made a lot of people go, who are they? Or couldn't they cast someone popular instead? Both Kaito Ishikawa and Soma Saito were not known at that time. They were mere rookies. Yet they managed to nail the blind audition and got the leading roles in this series. 
And yes, Shinichiro Watanabe is known for being a real pain to deal with because he's a really strict director. While blind auditions are still a rare thing in the industry, I believe that this is the way to go to avoid directors playing favorites and at the same time say you falling victims to sexual and psychological abuse or feeling like their skills are not enough to navigate and survive in the industry. That is a downward spiral that breaks a lot of seiyuu, with this being more common among female seiyuu that are in a fragile position in Japan. But you'll say, blind auditions are still not bias-free. Depends. How much do you think anime directors and producers listen to voice actors? Probably not much or at all outside of their work. They do not listen to drama CDs like we do. They don't watch their variety appearances like we do. Hell, they don't even listen to their music like we do. So they are not familiarized with their voices like we are, to the point that we can instantly identify a sigh of our favorite seiyuu, while other people glance at us thinking that we're either crazy or way too much into a specific voice. A blind audition, especially when a seiyuu is crafting a unique voice for a character, is the most anonymous setting you could get. Of course, there will be some directors that know their favorite voices like we do our favorites. In this case, the only option would be to single out those that play favorites. They are already known in the seiyuu industry and even newspapers in Japan have singled them out. And those that basically abuse their power and status should simply be removed from the industry. Give way for talented directors that just want to craft the best anime experiences, not those that are almost playing Pokemon, catching and collecting favorites, only using them in everything they are directing and completely forgetting about a sea of talented individuals that could, in normal circumstances, have nailed a role in their productions. Is that easy to do? Unfortunately, no. Most of those directors that play favorites or demand favors are big shots in the industry, having directed critically acclaimed anime series. Most, if not all, companies want to work with them because of their talents in the field. It doesn't excuse the fact that they are awful human beings, but you know how this is. Business has a way to ignore these things unless it is a trend or a globalized movement. As you can see, after the last episode on the CU ranking system and their earnings and today's brief talk about favoritism and the pillow business, you get that the CU industry is not a paradise. It is incredibly hard to join the CU industry. It is insanely hard to survive it. It is hard not to give in and take a shortcut, selling yourself in order to quickly stand out from others. It is hard to reach the top with talent alone. And those that do might very well be a selected few. Even male CU that are not in anyone's favorites lists seem to get roles in anime always from the same studios or from the same distribution companies. Once again, I'd like to mention that this is a really controversial and sensitive topic. The CU industry had a small, almost unnoticeable Me Too movement that made some female CU come forward about the abuse and all the manipulation that there is in the industry. Unfortunately, it was short-lived. You can also guess that for CU to tell their stories, they had to step out of the CU industry, or they would be blacklisted forever. I am talking, of course, about female CU. The cases with female CU are the best known, as some have spoken about it, but I have no doubts that it also happens to male CU. Fear of repercussions might be at the core as to why not more CU speak out about how the industry is at its core. The CU industry is as dark and dirty as you now have heard. 
Do you now understand why some say you try to focus too much on having a music career instead of doing anime work? They are trying to run away from that pressure, that abuse and those politics. They want to be regarded for their talents alone. They want to actually have enough to survive in the industry. They joined the industry because they wanted to make their dream come true. They wanted to have their voice on TV. They wanted to emulate their idols. They wanted to earn enough money to live off their passion. They didn't sign up to be abused. So appreciate your favorite CU. Support them in the best way you can. Remember, they are by themselves in this industry and it is far from being easy to navigate. I get the feeling that I went really dark with this episode as well with episode 8. Unfortunately, there is no bright way to talk to you about how putrid this industry is at its core. And I was not going to ignore that this side also exists. Some see you manage to avoid being manipulated, but never get to be big names in the industry. Known by some? Yes. Massive stars? Hardly. Of course, not everything is bad. There are still good anime directors and producers. There are still good people in the industry. There are some anime productions that have awesome environments in which both the cast and directors plus producers hang out in a healthy way, respect each other, but also recognize that they shouldn't have a bias and must give a chance to everyone to showcase their talents. So have that in mind as well. There are bad apples. Those have a lot of power, but those are fewer than the good apples in the industry. But they manage to make some people very wary of the industry. Now tell me, were you aware of what is behind those seemingly innocent auditions? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this episode and don't want to miss the Hand That Feeds HQ's weekly mail CU and music-related content, hit the subscribe button. I'll return next week with another episode of Seiyu Lounge. Thank you for listening and see you around.